Give that creeper a hat. Captain Nailan. Hello, Captain Nailan here. Welcome to a showcase of one of my own programs. Finally, another one. Today it's quiz. I made this one more basic. Why well, is this easier to RTP? And don't um, get very worried. This is just RDP's next update. The actual release will be out in at least a month. You shouldn't take too long. I had to get a list, of, a new list of computers because the school decided to update it or everything. The list of remote computers. So that's it then. And let's get into basically the program. This is not the program. This is the console, it's complete now. Added in the last library called CMD, which is basically CMD. But that's not what we're looking at. We're actually looking at my lovely application, which is actually sitting on my flash disk right now. I wrote the auto run file for this flash disk, by the way. And you can see that by. Wait, wrong one. It's documents SB. That's my homework. <laughs> After and wrong one. Quiz. Just finished client serve spring nine. Right. So basically, it contains two applications: it's under license CC attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives. Yeah. Both of these programs plus source code. These extensions are not, however, they're under their own license. This, as it says, well, that's it. So I create this application from basic. It's should be. Should be. Hope. Yeah, so this is how I carried it. It did take a little bit of time. Look, it's not as finished as you think. I didn't finish the threading of the loader. But I did finish the sand engine and quite a few other things and this core system. It was actually quite complicated. I was create two separate programs to create this one and then I ended up having to create this one here which is basically speech engine. I would rather be doing this on VB but I have really no idea how you well I do actually but I'm just lazy and I'm used to small basic and that is how complicated it actually is and you probably want to actually see it which is exactly what I want to show you so let's see it it will request question data right Question data is a special formatted data file formatted in some basic code. So I'll open up an example one. This should be the most. That. This should be the most readable one. Oh look, it's French vocab week f term three week five and it's year nine. Well, let's just have it. She read it. The format is the format is this. It's question equals answer semicolon and you do the next question equals answer semicolon and so on that's how you will do it that's how you code so you have to do question equals answer semicolon that's the that's basically how you format it so i'm probably this lovely thing there's also a settings file its format is settings property equals and then data setting data so this one is boolean that is this is not all these are not all the different um, things you can find them and I write the documentation for this number of questions number boolean 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 no, there's more than that there's more than those there are more I will actually write some documentation for that 
Speech engine has its own set of documentation. Sounds like the same copyright. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's a very useful application because you can basically make it talk to you. Yes, you can basically make it talk to you. So say if I open in command window here, I say speech engine, I can't spell speech, but I spelled it there like that, so there. Dot exe, and then we'll do dash speak equals hello world. I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit. Hello. Hello. Wait. Hello world. See? Hello world. Hello world. See? <laughs> it's hilariously funny. I coded that. Speech engine it supports a different set of command line parameters. Very useful. There's no thread errors like if when I put it in the actual code itself. Now you're probably wanting to see the actual. So that's because I didn't put any data into it. Quiz. So here's how you can do it. You can do the following. Right, let's not do that. Right, you can either, wait a minute. You can either click and drag a data file on top of it, or I'll slam that there, I'll slam that over there, and you can either do this, you can either. Click and drag one of these data files on it. Let's try something that's not too big actually. He, he has to Ready extract. To start. And it then says that. Two asterisk ten. And I'm sorry. One asterisk eight. One asterisk eight is eight is correct. Two asterisk four. Two. Zero asterisk eight. Shut up. Zero a eight asterisk eleven. I'm sorry, I'm so good at times tables. Seven asterisk eight. Yeah, I know. I sh Seven asterisk ten. So this is just showing you. Four asterisk. One. A Seven asterisk nine. Results correct. Ten incorrect. Zero. Then you can restart it. Ready to start. Another way of loading it is double clicking it and selecting the data file. One must. Yes, one must be exterminated. One must is ill fout is correct. <laughs> fout. The English accent on French stuff. Public transport. I'm not going to You can also, let me just show you this. If you have a file named data in the directory of the program, if you double click quiz and you hit cancel, it loads that data. Six. See? Another thing is, if there is no file called, called data and you've just double clicked it without dragging a file over it and you click cancel, it crashes. Quite a lot of things can make it crash by the way, so don't freak out. I think there are a few other things crash. So I don't know why I got two of these open. Yes, so you may be wondering how to code mm. one of these files. I hope you didn't hear that. I, I just did a trouser trifle on video. Well, I'm alright with that.
Doesn't matter, I'm saying I'm saying yeah. Right, how is that fact for Fine. Okay. Um <laughs> Let me think. Right, we we're gonna create a data file. So here's how you do it. Right, you right click, select new text document, normal. You call it whatever you like to call it, I'm just gonna call this questions for fun questions. You can call it whatever you like. Questions. So say and then you can do questions like um like what is the second letter of the alphabet and then we do equals and that would be B I'm sorry I can spell let me know yeah that's one question and if you run the question by clicking and dragging on top of quiz ready to start what is the second letter of the alphabet B what is the second letter of the alphabet? Is B is correct. Is B is correct. What is the second letter of the alphabet? Because Carousel doing no more questions and he's trying to do ten questions. Silly, really. Let's just say. What is the other... No, I'm going to remove the question because I don't need it. Other spelling of there. This is a good one. And you type in there on the other side. And let's say what does GG mean? Let's say this equals. Um, Good game. Right, let's try it again. While you're at it, I'm going to totally show you the simple code. You can see there's all defaults timed false and things like that. You can actually time, by the way. I'll show you that in a minute. But for now, I'm going to make that five questions. And I'm going to click, I'm going to make sure that's saved. And I'm going to click and drag questions on top or quiz. Ready to start. What is the other spelling of there? Mm, we'll say there. What? What is the second letter of the alphabet? What is the? What does GG mean? By the way, if you get something wrong, so. What does GG mean? Is good game was the correct answer, not oich fears. Exactly. And you see, it comes up there. What is the other spelling of there? What is the other spelling of there? What is the... What is the second letter of the alphabet? B. What is... B. The, what is the other... What is the other spelling of there? What does GG mean? What... Results... Correct. Basically, Nine. Ev correct. One. Oh, wait for the computer to finish. Wait for speech engine to finish. Right. Whenever you get a, a question right, you get a point added. Whenever you get one wrong, you get a point taken away. And here's the following. If you run out of time, you get 0 0.5 points taken away, but only if count out of time points is true. If you don't have a century here, it would be defaultly false. So, that's what we counted. Right. Do you want me to show you? Do you want me to show you now how sort of timing works? So I'll give it like five seconds. I'm gonna put it's timed is true. Time to answer is five seconds. And now we're going to start up times table zero to twelve because I love testing myself on my times tables. Ready to start. Two, two tons eight. Two tons eight. 
Well, my head! And if you run out of time, it doesn't say anything. Was the correct answer. Ran out. It's actually quite clever because it like I love the colours. One asterisk. Now I'm in the game. Nine asterisk. Two asterisk. One asterisk. Five is five. Zero asterisk. The the speech is actually asterisk, really dodgy. Three is zero is correct. Seven asterisk nine. The speech Seven engine is seriously dodgy, is 63 is especially correct. if you've got really bad CPU. Three asterisk, two asterisk, ten asterisk, twelve. Results, correct, nine, incorrect, zero. So basically, I did get correct nine, but since I, since is time, since um, I've made out count out time points true, it takes away 0 0.5 every time we get out of time. So I got 8.5 points, so yeah. Ready to start. Five. 6 asterisk 12. 6 a 4 asterisk. 1 asterisk. 4 asterisk 9. Well, I've forgotten that. Oh no. My mind's blank. Damn it. Sorry. Six asterisk six. Four asterisk twelve. Eleven asterisk. Three as. Nine asterisk twelve. Okay. Results. Mm. Correct. Nine. Incorrect. Zero. Right. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, not yet. Sorry. Yep. These will be distributed with. By the way, just to remind you, there can be some slow loading. But I'll show you an example of this. So you have files that load quite quickly, like this. That's quite quick. Your files open extremely quickly like this you've also got files that open extremely slowly especially if they're above 10 kilobytes I'll give an example of ok so yeah it's extracting question though. it takes a little bit of time I've got to wait for it to count on how many semicolons there are first it's hilarious I've never actually seen it Then when it's finished counting semicolons, the bar actually begins to move. You don't fret when this happens if you're using a pie sized file. Kind of. You just have to wait. I mean, it is extracting question data. But I bet you when I stop task manager it begins. Yep, it's moving. See? That is how slow it's moving. And when it finishes loading, it actually finishes. Next piece of program is going for a decoder state, and I'll show you where that is. By the way, if you want to know where the time code is, it's here, the timing code. Um, if you want to see what this is. See how it actually goes looking for and those and it takes ages. It takes absolutely ages. And you can basically close it. And when it's finished, it's you can always restart once it's finished. So if you press the restart button, it starts to from the beginning and it doesn't have to load again. Obviously, when you close the program, you think got re and you want to reload it, you gotta wait again. So yeah, there are some slow loaders, but by the way, as for that slow loader, this is how actually how big it is. Uh, 
and that's how big it is, that's why it takes so long. Look, 92 minus minus 49 is 43. That is why it's slow loading. It's saved. The bonus. Die. X to minus 8. X to minus 8. X to minus 8. X to minus 8 them. Yes. X to minus 8. Daleks are powerful. Daleks cannot be defeated. <laughs> X to minus eight. Wait. Oh, <laughs> I know, right? Sad. Yeah, I have a list of tall bridges here if you really want to know. Doesn't really matter though. That's the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed, but for now it's goodbye from Captain LM. This download is available in the description.